So um, thank you, everyone. Um, and it's in the afternoon. We're reaching lunch. So I hope to make your talk exciting. Can we get started? So I'm going to talk about something very specific, uh, something very different. Um, I come from the automobile industry. I've been part of this industry for about 21 years now uh, in different facets of life. I have been a consultant to companies. I've worked with them. Uh, I've sold them software. I've seen the global automotive industry change. And as we talk about sustainability, uh, the elephant in the room is the automobile. And when I say automobile, I mean cars, trucks, buses, two-wheeler, passenger vehicles, uh, anything to do with mobility. And uh, the biggest, uh, I think the biggest creator of carbon dioxide or, or the climate change that is happening is our desire to move uh, from place to place and how we burn fossil fuels to make that happen. Next, please. So I will talk about, from an Indian perspective, where we are and, and how things are changing and how, in a small little way, we can also help from a sustainability point of view of the choices that we make uh, and, and good choices, right? So if you look at from an India perspective, just to give you some numbers, India consumes about uh, 100 crore liters of fuel every day. Every day. That's the amount of fuel we burn in India. It's about a billion liters of fuel every day, right? Um, and that number by 2027, 2028, so in about seven, eight years from now, will go to about 180 liters of fuel every day. That is a crazy number of fuel that we'll be burning. As all of us can see, our cities are congested. All of us are buying cars or you know, new two-wheelers. Uh, and that is definitely not sustainable. And from a perspective of how many people own automobiles in India, it's a very small number. So if everyone starts owning a car and everyone starts owning a bike, uh, and they drive the way we just won't be able to move. It's, it, it won't work, right? So a couple of things uh, have happened in the last 10 years is the concept of electrification. And electric vehicles, uh, you know, predominantly became popular by Tesla, um, is becoming more and more popular even in countries like India. Now, what does an electric vehicle do? An electric vehicle essentially is a battery-powered vehicle, which may have one motor or maybe multiple motors, and which propels the vehicle forward, uh, a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler or a truck or a bus. And the difference between an electric vehicle and an IC engine vehicle is in the electric vehicle, you're burning the fuel or you're generating the electricity in a central location, um, a generation plant, which could be solar or wind or you know, micro hydro, or it could be a thermal plant. Uh, as opposed to an IC engine vehicle, you're burning the fuel in the vehicle. So you have a diesel engine or a petrol engine, and, and you turn on the car, and, and you kind of go. Now, what that does is, when you are using, when you're centrally generating the electricity, your efficiency ratios may be as high as 60 to 70 percent. Uh, in a car, it's a very inefficient uh, machine. You know, the IC engine vehicle has been around since you know early 1900s, and um, it's, the efficiency ratios are really, really, you know, they, they haven't really increased. So, the electric vehicle is extremely um, uh, efficient from from the driving point of view, or from a from a sustainability point of view. So on that point, we are able to reduce a lot of our fuel consumption as our demand and our uh, you know, desire to buy products kind of keep increasing. I will also uh, if you go back, I will also talk about how the vehicles are getting connected. So all these vehicles that we see around us, they all have a SIM card, and um, they all are broadcasting their information to some kind of a server or what we call as a cloud. So all of these are interconnected. So all our vehicles are interconnected and. and from a computer point of view, you can start seeing how these grids are moving across the country or across the world. And then I'll give you some examples of what is happening and, and what technology breakthroughs are happening worldwide, uh, which will change the way sustainable mobility works. Right? So as I said, um, Indians have a desire to move. You know, humans have a desire to move. We started with the, the wheel, uh, then the wheel, then we had the horse, the horse carriage. Uh, steam engines came around, ships came around. Uh, locomotives came around, uh, cars came around, planes came around, right? And, and if you look at the number of people who are traveling and moving from one place to another place, it's, it's very common. If you grew up in a small town you know, 40 years ago or 30 years ago, you kind of lived there and you moved around in a 10-kilometer radius. Uh, today, we have people traveling from all over the world uh, to be here in this place in Rachi, right? So mobility keeps increasing, but uh, coming back to an electric point of view, um, India is a two-wheeler electric country or a two-wheeler country. So if you look at the number of two-wheelers selling in India, anywhere ranges, depending on the year we talk about, it's gone anywhere from 
14, 15 million uh, two-wheelers all the way to 20 million two-wheelers sold in a year. Um, that's a lot of bikes and, and these two-wheelers don't die. What that means is if I bought a motorcycle, let's say five years ago, I don't like it anymore, I got a new one, I sell it off, it goes into some rural hinterland and more and more people start using this and, and if you see the number of people traveling on buses as opposed to now having your own motorcycle or your own scooter, that number keeps increasing day by day. So the journey has started. So in, in India, um, you know, government came up, both um, all our older governments or the new government, they all came up with the concept of supporting the electric two-wheeler industry by giving tax breaks and tax incentives. And uh, more and more uh, states have an EV policy adopted. So, you know, I'm, I'm living in Mumbai, in Maharashtra or in Karnataka, there's a very definite EV policy of, of or, or Delhi, of how you basically support the local dealership and you in, encourage the consumption of um, electric vehicles. As I said, EVs are more than two to three times more efficient and the Indian EV industry is growing at about 36% CAGR. So what that means is just last month in November, about 75,000 uh, EV vehicles were sold on a national basis. And that number will keep increasing and keep increasing. You won't even realize it. It'll just be like the mobile smartphone. You know, 10, 15 years ago, no one had smartphones. Now everyone has a smartphone. You know, we were on 3G networks a few years ago. We moved to 4G, we never realized. And now we'll be in a 5G network in the next couple of years. So the EV revolution is on. And I was, I was driving around Rachi yesterday and the number of uh, electric scooters I saw on the road was, was quite substantial. And, and it is much cheaper. So if you look at it from a normal ice engine vehicle or a petrol diesel vehicle, it costs you about 10 rupees a kilometer to drive the vehicle. Electric vehicle is anywhere from 80 pesa to about one rupee a kilometer. So it's one tenth the price. So the whole concept of sustainability here is not based on someone liking something, it's just cheaper, right? And it's good for the environment. So it's a double whammy. So as these vehicles become more and more um, electrified, one of the most important things in electric vehicles is the concept of connectivity. And almost all these vehicles that you see on the road, you know, in India right now, uh, the electric scooters such as Ola, Aether, Bajaj, TVS, Hero, Torque, there are lots of brands. They all have a SIM card. Now, many of you will find it odd that why does a vehicle need a SIM card? They all have a connectivity. They're all broadcasting to the cloud. Now, what they're basically doing is, as you're driving your vehicle, how your battery packs are being designed, uh, if you're driving a hill, it is able to sense that, hey, you're driving a hill, so it reduces your, it increases the torque and it reduces uh, your range. If you're stuck in traffic, it'll, you know, resynthesize your battery management system and it will reduce your en energy consumption, right? Uh, it gives you driver behavior patterns. If I'm driving an electric car, um, if I need to use the wiper, it may reduce your uh, propulsion systems to give you more energy because it's raining, so you need the more wiper and things like that. Because the vehicle is generating uh, a lot of data, that data is being captured on the, on the system, and these are all computerized. You know, human beings are not getting involved in this. This is all automated. Right? So data to improve and optimize the usage of the machine. Um, the other thing that happens, because these vehicles are connected um, and they're electric, now think about it. If I have a pizza delivery company here in, 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 in the city, um, I come today, I have my own bike. I have to pay, you know, all of us use food delivery apps to, to, to buy things. Uh, imagine the amount of uh, uh, e-commerce and food delivery app, the transportation that is happening every day in every city, right, across the, across the country, across the world. Now these vehicles become electric and they become connected. Um, I come in the morning to the pizza shop. I can just pick up the bike which is charged. I take out my mobile phone. It senses me and says, hey, uh, I am charged. Um, you are uh, the authenticated person. There is an Aadhaar stack that is available. Uh, the vehicle and, and, and the driver sense each other. He picks up a vehicle and he drives and, and he goes around the way. So that becomes shared mobility, right? And uh, for example, I drive to office, I park my car. Um, my car is parked over there for eight hours. I'm in office, it's not doing anything else. I, if the vehicle had connected data, I can basically uh, synchronize and I can say, hey, I want to rent my car out for the day. But I only want to rent it to a person who I trust. Now, how do you define who you trust, right? So all of us have an Aadhaar card. All of us have a, a, a behavioral stack, uh, a credit scores. And based on the credit score, the computer can tell you that, hey, this, these three people are looking to borrow your car for four hours. I guess they need it. Uh, would you be okay to auction it to them for 200 rupees an hour or 300 rupees an hour, right? Now, instead of him going and buying and he can just basically borrow or rent uh, this car of yours, which is anyway sitting idle for, you know, eight hours a day uh, and uses the asset, asset again. So it's not even saving fuel, but you're also saving a lot of uh, other minerals that are used to build that product like tires, etc., uh, which would have been wasted. 
So connected. And then the third thing is because these vehicles are connected, um, I know I can do a lot of predictive maintenance. Uh, I know how to manage my inventories in the back end. So I'm not air shipping things, I'm not airlifting things, because now I have seamless data flowing back and forth, and then you're making easy decisions on that. And you make your supply chains much more efficient to support this mega automotive industry. So a couple of uh, unique examples. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, Human beings are very, very innovative. I have, I have a very optimistic view of the world. I think we will solve a lot of these problems. So these are two interesting examples. Uh, one is from Germany, it's a company called Sono Motors. Another one is from, a com from, from Netherlands, it's a company called Lightyear. Uh, I have had the opportunity to work with both of them. And uh, these are solar powered cars, right? So they fundamentally change the way automobiles work, right? You don't even need petrol or diesel anymore. You don't even need to charge them. They just run on solar, right? And if you look at uh, the car in the bottom, light here, it's, they have made prototypes right now, you can search it on the internet. And um, they are able to give you a range of about a thousand kilometers. So they have a battery inside, you can charge it. But once you charge it, you can leave it out. So effectively, you know, only need to charge twice a year. It's self launch And this is in Netherlands, where it's, you know, the European sun is not as strong as the Indian sun, right? Uh, Cyan, which is the other vehicle that they're making, but they're also making the whole panels and they've blended it into the, into the uh, plastic mold and embedded it in, into the vehicle. Um, this vehicle actually becomes a battery pack itself. It becomes a storage grid. So the next big thing in technology around sustainability and energy is storage. Can I get solar and wind and how do I store it for the nighttime, et cetera? And uh, these vehicles actually uh, can be used, like, so let's say you have, a, you have a wedding and we have generators in all these weddings. These cars can essentially be used to, to power up your, your, your wedding that, that is there, right? So a lot of these technologies are coming. Um, it's something different, and it is, uh, you know, it is affordable. I mean, these, these vehicles will eventually be selling for something like ten to fifteen or thirty thousand dollars, approximately, in the in the European market. Indian market maybe even still cheaper because we have a larger automobile market here. And uh, so these are some unique examples of sustainable mobility. Um, along the way, definitely, uh, we need more trains because you're able to move more people over there. Uh, but we need to electrify at a rate. Um, which was not thought of, and I believe we will do it in the, in the coming few years. Thank you.